In this lesson, we'll look at device security in the Windows Security app. Let's open the Windows Security app and I'll select device security. The tools you see here will vary depending on your hardware. The tools available are designed to help protect your device from malicious software attacks. The first one we see here is Core Isolation. Core Isolation provides added protection from tampering from malware and other attacks by using virtualization to isolate computer processes from your operating system and device. Some aspects of Core Isolation will be enabled by default if the hardware is present. Most of this is enabled from the BIOS, so you won't see any changes that you're really able to make from here, except for one item. I'll select Core Isolation Details. Down here under Memory Integrity, we have a switch that we can enable or disable. Memory Integrity is a feature of Core Isolation, but for some people, this is not enabled by default. When enabled, Memory Integrity prevents malicious code from accessing your higher security processes in the event of an attack. An example of this type of attack could come from corrupt hardware drivers. Now, if your device supports it, it's a good feature to enable. Expect to be asked to reboot if you change this setting. If your device does not support this, Windows will automatically turn it off again. We'll return to device security, and our next area here is security processor. Now, this is referring to a chip that's actually on the motherboard. The Trusted Platform Module, or TPM, is used on newer computers to provide additional encryption for your device. You can see details on the TPM, and as you can see here, status is provided. Now this information can be helpful if you run into trouble with your device and encryption and you need to troubleshoot the issue. Going back, we can look at the next area shown on this device, Secure Boot. Now Secure Boot is aimed at an especially dangerous type of threat called a rootkit. A device that's infected with a rootkit can be especially difficult to clean up. Rootkits use the same permissions on a device as the operating system, and they actually start before it. This means they're often able to completely hide themselves from antivirus software. Rootkits can often bypass local logins, they can record passwords and keystrokes, they can transfer private files, and they can capture data. Secure Boot will only use specific drivers that are provided by the manufacturer and that are recorded on your device's firmware. So no code can just sneakily slip into the boot process and run in the background. Now more than likely, your device will have Secure Boot enabled if you see it here. While there isn't a switch to turn Secure Boot on or off, it can be done if you're willing to jump through some additional hoops. You'll need to use the Advanced Startup Options from the Settings app to make changes to your device's actual BIOS. The only reasons you should need to disable Secure Boot would be compatibility problems with some of your hardware, maybe graphic cards, or because of some dual boot configuration problems related to operating systems such as Linux or older versions of Windows. The last item that I wanted to point out under device security is the compatibility message that's provided down here. You'll likely see one of only a few messages here. As you can see on this one, the device meets the requirements for standard hardware security. So features like core isolation and memory integrity are supported. You might also see a message indicating your device meets the requirements for enhanced hardware security. This would mean all standard features are supported and memory integrity is turned on. In some cases, you might see a message indicating that standard hardware security is not supported. This means that your device does not meet at least one of the requirements of standard hardware security. So it may be time to consider a new device, or you may want to investigate to see if something is disabled in your device's BIOS. In this lesson, we've looked at device security in the Windows Security app. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.